Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Stefan Petran. Uh, I went to a conference called EMBO++ in Germany. Um, this is a bit experimental presentation because I have no slides. I have pictures and images instead. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Hope it, f it works well. So uh, I went to the EMBO++ conference in Bochum, Germany. Uh, it was uh, from Friday to Saturday, so it was not the uh, uh, middle of the week. And uh, it was last time there was a meetup here in Stockholm, so that's why I wasn't here. Uh, and then I went home on Sunday. Uh, they have a pre-part of this conference earlier during the week, and uh, they did visit different like breweries and other hacker spaces and other things, which, but I didn't attend that because I had to do work. And on, on the Sunday, they also had a C++ working group meeting there. I don't remember which working group it was, but they, they met up on Sunday, those most interested on, in that topic. Uh, as the name implies, it's a conference for embedded developers using C++. Uh, this year, there was also some presentation and a workshop on Rust for those interested in that. Uh, <clears throat> the, the conference is very small, I talked to one of the arrangers and, oh, just, I need some water. <clears throat> uh, he said that was about 100 participants in the conference, which is, makes it kind of small. Uh, there were two tracks most of the time and one workshop track. Um, and they also have a Slack channel for all communication, which is, uh, cannot be that many on that Slack channel because it, before it becomes quite, quite full. So it was very nice. Uh, the, the conference is running in, in Bochum, Germany. And as you see, it's in the middle of Germany. And if you can't really, Bochum is here. I tried to zoom out a bit. Bochum is here. The border to Holland is here, here's Holland, here's Eindhoven, so I saw here somewhere, and this is Belgium. So it's in the rural area of, of uh, Germany. And uh, the, the town <coughs> is an old coal mining city in the heart of Germany. And I flew there to Düsseldorf, uh, somewhere around here, there, it's Düsseldorf. And then you go by train up to Bochum, it takes two hours to fly there and it takes half an hour to go by train about. Uh, huh? Why? They have a coal mining museum, it was uh, an old coal mining city as I said, so the, but the only residues of the coal mining is, is uh, these uh, museums that they have. So when I came there, I, I actually on the Sunday when I was free, I went visited this museum and you can go up to the top of that uh, thing with an elevator and it's quite a view and uh, I don't speak much German so I speak English instead and the uh, elevator operator he thought I was English because he said when I came back he said did you go all the way to the top because the elevator goes up and then you have to go up two floors more yeah yeah, yeah I was on the top I said oh did you see London he said no, 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 I didn't. Oh, that, that, that's before Brexit, Brexit, you could see London, he said. <laughs> he was very funny. Uh, but since they stopped mining coal, it's a good thing to stop mining coal. They, uh, the whole Bochum has become like a uh, Wirtschaft, uh, science, uh, universities and stuff. And uh, this conference was a part of the university. And they filmed every session, every talk and stuff, but I haven't seen anything on YouTube yet. I hope it will come out because there were some really good talks, actually. Uh, the, the conference has started a bit earlier, before in the week. So they had every night, they had like get together and drink beer. But I never participated in any of this because I was very tired every evening. I didn't, I didn't manage to go out and drink beer in the evenings also. Uh, so the first day, now let's see if I'm here. Yeah, I arrived at my hotel, a very nice hotel, but the room wasn't very big. It's, uh, 
It was a bed and a little table, and that's about it. But since you don't spend so much time in the hotel room, it's, it's okay. A very nice hotel, a very nice breakfast and stuff. Uh, but the first day I should get to the conference, it was a problem for me, because I'm from Sweden, so I always use my credit card for everything. And when you go outside Sweden, it doesn't work. You have to have cash. So I have to walk around half the city to get a ticket to the tram to get to the university, and that took a while. So, and they wondered why, ah, oh, we haven't started the conference really yet, because we're waiting for everyone. Oh, I think oh, everyone's looking for to buy tickets to the tram. But in the end, uh, later on, when I came to the conference, they actually handed out tickets to, to the participants, so that was very nice too. So. Exactly, couldn't handle that cash, but no, they were a bit sneaky. So. And, and uh, when I came to the conference, now oh, let's see, I hope it's still. Uh, they handed out the, the name badge. Oops, I'll take that. Seat. The name badge was this one, and uh, you had to type your name and stuff, and on the back side, like very convenient upside down, because when you look at it, you do this, was the program. <laughs> And the first day's program was a sticker, so the second day you just remove the sticker, and that was the second day's program. So the first talk was, oh, there's the sticker. The first day sticker, here are all the talks. So they have uh, track one, track two, and the workshop, and they have uh, every half day workshops. Uh, so the first talk was about testing and quali qualification of compilers. Uh, no, let's see. There was a sponsor talk, so the guy was from a company that Solid Sands that actually, yeah, some of the sponsors for this conference and then they don't have a parallel track, so everyone must go to this talk to hear him. Uh, uh, then off, so he talked about yeah compiler compiler testing etc. And then <coughs> uh, after the break, then there was a uh, break and there was bre breakfast with a proper breakfast and uh, uh, so there was a fixed point uh, talk in parallel with this refactoring using libtooling. Uh, very interesting to see. I didn't know that you could use jib tooling for these kind of things. They also, during the breaks, had a coffee wagon or whatever you call it. It's, uh, this, it's not, not any machine that makes you coffee. There were actually two guys standing there the whole day making you real espresso or whatever coffee you fancied. Uh, and the hotel, my hotel, was. I was very... Gladly surprised, positively surprised, that they have very nice coffee there too. So, well, a very good weekend in Germany. Then it was this guy, and he talked about uh, C++ in deeply embedded systems. And this talk was, I think, the highlight of the, the whole weekend, for me at least. So, uh, not, not so much news for me, but... Uh, but it confirmed a lot of thoughts that I have about C++, C++ on embedded systems. So he had uh, a C code base, which he had transferred to using C++, uh, C++ and he ran on a Cortex-M0. So he had a lot of how he could optimize and how much he could do some things with a C++ compiler. Then there was lunch. Uh, it was served in the hall outside of the conference rooms. So you had to eat standing up, and uh, my love for German cousin is not that overwhelming, but mm, I got some food at least. And then after lunch, there was supposed to be a workshop on embedded, program, embedded programming with modern C++. Uh, unfortunate, this guy couldn't uh, come, so he, it was cancelled, very much to my disappointment. Yes? Uh, what's the difference between a deeply embedded system just a plain system. Yeah, in his, or in my view, in his view also, it, it's a, if you have a microcontroller, that's what he calls a deeply embedded uh, C++ system, because uh, embedded, if you, in today's terms, generally say, 
I work on an embedded system. And that can mean everything from like a Linux machine to this kind of Cortex M0. So uh, what he means is that the, what you call it, lower end of, of, uh, of embedded systems. Because it's very many questions. Ah, oh, you work in embedded systems? Yeah, I have a Linux system where I do. That's, that's very much too advanced for me. <laughs> Um, and this, uh, since uh, this uh, workshop was cancelled that I planned to go to, actually, uh, more than C++, it's very nice. Uh, there was a lot of other talks uh, that they put in instead. And uh, I went to one talk, as I talked during the coffee break, and it was way above my head. <laughs> I could absolutely not understand what they talked about at all. Um, but that was a bit of shame because I spent time at the other talk that was in parallel with this one. But mm, you learn. Uh, it was generally ha a bit hard to guess whatever the talk was going to be good or interesting. I have basically no idea who these people are, so it was hard guessing who, if the talk would be good or bad. And I failed a couple of times. It's like, I went to, this sounds very interesting. And I went to the talk and it was like, no, this was not interesting or not suited for me. Um, but in between the longer talks, they had lightning talks and they were not really properly announced either. It was really hard. To, it took me like the second day I realized, oh, there are lightning talks. Oh, they are interesting subjects. So hmm, they should announce them better. And I actually suggested for one of the arranger that uh, how they should improve it and I hope to next year he, he uses that. Uh, the next talk I was attending was uh, Deadly Sins of Development. This guy Peter Wiedenbach he showed us a live show where he infected a printer and then made it actually print really strange things. Uh, uh, both enlightening and entertaining at, at the same time because he had a camera on the printer and show what was shown on the displays and, and when, when he infected, <coughs> infected it. And he had also a, a bunch of uh, suggestions for people to think about that, this when you develop a, an application to make it secure. Ah. Mm. Uh, after another coffee break or break, there were lots of breaks in between. Ah, there was a lot of cyber security at that place. Rodon Schwartz is a, for me, very known uh, company. Uh, after the break, at least, it was uh, embedded C++ software development. And it was a very generic uh, subject. And I don't still don't really know what this guy wanted to say and uh, very confusing and another of these what am I doing here moments when I saw his talk so I have still no idea what he wanted to say but yeah. And the last talk for this day for the first day was uh, a guy also sponsored talk it was also one single track day so you, everyone should go to the same talk. Uh, it was about checking performance for your code. And that was, uh, yeah, he had a different... Uh, and then everyone uh, went off at home, or some people went to this restaurant where they drank beer again, but I went to my local Turkish shop and had my nightly kebab again. Uh, very nice, very good kebabs in Germany. But the morning after, you peeled off this uh, sticker and got the... the what was underneath it and was the second day's program. Uh, every time, and uh, this morning it went much easier to get on the tram because I knew how to do it. But uh, funny story, every time I wanted to go home, I knew exactly which station I should go get off at. And I always noted it when the train left the station, oh, I should get off here. Every time. I think never managed to, to, to get off <coughs> at the right, right station. Uh, this morning was also yet another sponsored talk. How to find the right amount of abstraction for hardware was not that interesting so, because I don't remember any of it. And, uh, 
more than what's on this picture, actually. Uh, the workshop, the parallel workshop this morning, this uh, was about uh, building embedded devices with KiCad. So they had some hardware people showing how to use this uh, schematic and uh, PCB layout tool for people. I did not attend that. And uh, let's see. No. Uh, Yes, and uh, there was a talk uh, that I also attended, uh, type-based allocation from a guy called Chil Duves. I don't know if I pronounce it right. Uh, right, a bit over my head, but the basic, he basically had an idea on how to allocate memory efficient. I didn't find that very efficient, that the, the way he explained it, but just complicated. So, hmm. uh, but this talk, this talk was more interesting. It was Pavel Vishnes. Vishnevsky, uh, hard to pronounce name, and he talked about the unit tests and uh, I had some long talks with him during the break etc. about unit testing, so I think it's a very, very interesting topic. Uh, he had a suggestion on, and I actually learned the difference between mocking and unit tests. Uh, that was very interesting. So I never thought about that before, but uh, he had a list here of, of different uh, uni frameworks to do unit testing. And um, uh, So then I unfortunately, as usual with conferences, you have programs <laughs> in parallel, so I missed the embedded C++ for C programmers and the subtle art of debugging. I would have really have that like to attend the done, but I hope for the video, so. Hmm. Uh, then I attended uh, two very interesting lightning talks, actually. And it was this guy, and he talked about using sanitizers. Clang has a lot of sanitizers, and he explained how they work, and what they do, and what kind of errors they find, etc. Um, I think it was almost in the sense of your, uh, what's it called, fussing talk. <laughs> Uh, and the, this is, oh, and you have drinks between, uh, I don't know, German drinks are very strange. <laughs> this guy was very interesting, I also had a lot of talk with him both between the to other talks and I actually talked to him like half an hour, an hour on the journey back to the, the airport about his talk. <laughs> uh, Piotr Grigoshko. <laughs> talked about enable C++ multithreading in free RTOS. Uh, he had tried and almost succeeded to get C++ standard threads to work using free RTOS, uh, which is a popular RTOS for embedded systems. And I had long discussion about this, and I might come back on that later. I talked about with Harald about that during the break here. Uh, he had almost succeeded, but uh, we discussed during the, the trip to the airport and uh, it was more complicated one than what I realized. So, uh, After lunch there, uh, Odin Holmes, your friend there, he had a workshop about interrupts and how to handle them, but I didn't attend that, unfortunately. So I went to another talk called USB for the masses, and I hope to learn a lot about USB, but oh no, the guy didn't know anything about, or very little at least, about USB at all. He, he had wrong on speeds even, when he explained uh, what USB was, he, he, he gave the wrong speed. The only thing he had correct was the name of the connectors for the USB. Uh, then I listened to uh, another, also about operating system, uh, talk about C++ as AP for small real-time operating system. Uh, but should be very interesting, but I found myself sleeping through it. I, I, was, I was very much information during the day, so, so I was a bit sleepy. But the guy talked about executors, which is a new C++ uh, suggestion. Uh, it was supposed to come into C++ 20, but it was cancelled and it probably come in uh, in C++ 23. Uh, and it's uh, basically a way to solve some of the problems an RTOS can have when implementing RTOS in the C++ as this Piotr suggested. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
And then came this guy, um, this one was very interesting to the R Torsten Robitsky, he talked about a library he called Bluetooth. I asked him why he named it Bluetooth and I don't know, he said it was a funny name when he started the project. So it's a Bluetooth stack in C++, it's written from scratch, it does not use any C, C layer underneath, it's written from start. And it was very impressive uh, by using heavy templating have managed to create a very efficient Bluetooth implementation all in C++. And after that we gathered in small groups, uh, yeah, that's okay. uh, in small groups and had small discussion about uh, diverse topics and in the end we gathered together, we took one guy from each group, had to sit in a panel in front and discussing the, the future for embedded C++. And uh, it was both funny and uh, thought uh, provoking and it was very nice. These, these guys are very talkative and very, has very good opinions and stuff. So it was very fun to hear them talk. Uh, and then the day ended with, the, as they call in the program, the famous after show party. I don't know really what it is. But it was a fancy dinner in an eccentric building. I don't have a picture of the building in itself, but this was the view from the, the top of it. The, the description how to get there was like, you go out the door, you watch for the highest building in the city, and you go there. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the Sunday then, I went back to this, or I actually went to the Bergbau Museum and uh, yeah, can you see London over there? No, sorry, can't really. So it was a bit windy on the top <laughs> when I was there, so a bit calmer. Yeah, you had a good view from the top and you could also go down in old mines. It was very interesting with all the mining equipments. Uh, uh, it's almost as they just walked out to take a break or something. Um, but, uh, as a conclusion, I can say that it was a very good conference. Uh, unfortunately, it was a really hard to know which talk was good and which talk was bad. And the level of the talks were from really good to really bad. Uh, I hope I have improved my skill for selecting good talks for next year, because I will definitely go and I have already saved the date. So, if anyone's more interested in going to this conference in Germany, I would uh, really recommend it and save the date and remember the website. And if you don't do it, I told the guy, the arrangement, the arranger, what's it called that? Uh, of the guy uh, that I should have this presentation here at the meetup, and he gave me a bunch of stickers. So, anyone want one sticker, one want ten stickers, it's free, take them. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, that's my conclusion. Anyone having a question or comment or anything similar? <sighs> yeah, uh, you mentioned that there was, from what I gather from your understanding, like a very high proportion of talks that were not that good. Yes. Uh, how would you compare to your experience to other conference you went to? I have never been to a C++ <coughs> conference before, so I have no comparison to that. I have been to FOSDEM and I have been to Chaos Computer uh, Congress and their camps. And these are usually very good talks. I don't know if they are bigger or attract more people or something or something, but uh, they are usually much better talks than... than uh, but the, the good talks here were really good. Okay, so, so it's more the selection process, you would say? Yeah, or either the, the availability of people wanting to speak. So I, I don't know which, what it is that, that uh, made the, the selection process uh, that's varying. It's good. <laughs> yes? No German talks, only in English. Uh, I have heard uh, the, the guy that I did not, that wasn't there, He's, he also talks English, but it's very heavy German accented, but basically it's all English, so... So there's no German talks. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Stefan. Okay, thank you.